Wow. Okay. Lawlers, welcome to Morgana Beginner Champ Guide. Today we're going to be covering off everything you need to know to pick this champ up as a beginner, from the runes, the items, the abilities, some basic combos, and then a sample laning face to tie it all together so you guys can jump into your games and hopefully have a lot of fun. So Morgana is a champion that plays pretty much a support or mid lane character. You can flex her in the jungle if you're feeling extra spicy, um, but for the purposes of today, we're gonna focus on playing mid lane Morgana. You can obviously take all the concepts that we talk about today and apply to some different roles as well. So don't be scared about uh, doing that too. So um, starting off with the runes here, Morgana kind of plays like a poke control uh, AP character so we're going to be running arcane comet that means anytime we hit a champion with one of our abilities we're going to get some extra uh, damage on them through the poking comet and then of course because we're going to be running poke most of the time we're going to have mana flow band to up our mana we're going to have transcendence to give us some extra ability haste so we can poke even more often and then scorch so that our next damaging ability sets people on fire for even more damage so you can see a very um, consistent theme through all those runes in the primary tree now secondary you have a little bit more flexibility depending on the matchup the game the team comps the role itself um, i just put in time warp tonic and futures market i like having time warp tonic if i'm going to run corrupting potion start it just synergizes so well with it and as a beginner i feel like it gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room in the lane phase to take some damage sustain back up try the trading patterns a, a little bit more frequently so i'd recommend that and then futures market Big, big power spike for any time you're playing an AP poke mage is getting that lost chapter. Um, so the futures market ensures that you have a little bit of flexibility to base maybe in a non-optimal backing time where you don't have enough gold, but still get that, uh, that lost chapter and get your power spike when you get back to lane. So coming off of the runes, then we're going to talk about the build and the items here. So the shop is recommending Spell Thief's Edge because it recognizes Morgana as a support. But we're actually going to start with that Corrupting Potion. That's going to be your go-to starter item as a beginner. And like we talked about, gives you some very good sustain, uh, both mana and health-wise, in the laning phase. Now in terms of your rush item for the Mythic here, it is going to be Leandri's Anguish in every single game right now. Um, this is a really, really good item. I know it says anti-tank, but it just synergizes is so well with Morgana's W poke and the burn damage that you get off this item. It also gives you a good chunk of ability power, whole, whole pool of mana to just keep spamming your Ws, and then of course that ability haste to keep spamming them as well. And then the Agony and Torment passives, um, which just add on to your damage. So you're going to pick up that Anguish, then you're going to ru rush the Sorcerer's Shoes. It gives you the mobility and magic penetration that you want. And then really here, by the time you get to your third item, it's a little bit game state specific. Um, I would just kind of meat and potatoes stock recommend getting the Demonic Embrace that synergizes really well with the Leandri's Anguish to give you a good core item set. But if you find yourself getting one shot a lot, there's a lot of bursty people on the enemy team, or when you try and go into team fights in ult, you want a little bit of um, protection from the stasis, stasis active from this item, then you can grab that as your second item. But generally, if you're looking to have a little bit more fun and just pump out damage, that Demonic Embrace is going to be your second rush item. So that gives us a core of Leandri's Anguish, the Sorcerer's Shoes, and the Demonic Embrace. If you get to these three items by 20 minutes, every time you land a QW combo, you're going to be chunking people out for a huge amount of damage. You might even be able to one-shot some squishier targets with that after one or two combos. So a um, lot, a lot of fun if you build this way. And uh, yeah, I think with that, let's talk about the abilities here. So I've got a, just a little bit of a practice dummy set up in the base here for us to try a few abilities. Before we learn any of our basic abilities here, let's quickly talk about Soul Siphon, the passive. So this is actually a really good passive for lane sustain for Morgana and even later on into the game. As you level up, it doesn't really heal you for any more percentage health, but throughout the whole game, you're going to heal for 18% of the damage dealt by your abilities, okay? Um, that are de dealing damage to champions, large minions, and medium and larger jungle monsters. So basically anything other than like the smaller creeps or minions that you're going to face in lane phase or the jungle. So what that means is if you hit somebody with a Q, you're going to heal. If you hit somebody with a W, you're going to heal. If you hit somebody with your R, you're going to heal, right? So there's some really good sustain. So if you're kind of like 25% health in the mid lane and you're not sure if you need to back or if you can stay, you can and just kind of cast W's and Q's on enemy champions and just heal back up. Um, it's pretty surprising actually how much healing you'll get from it. So 
Now let's shift into the basic abilities. W is kind of your bread and butter as Morgana. Considering that you're going to just be starting in lane phase and not doing any kind of crazy invades and you don't want the, the snare from your Q dark binding, you're going to pick up your W first and this is also the ability you're going to max first. This puts basically a circular area of damage on the ground that deals magic damage over 5 seconds and it can get increased based on the target's percent missing health. So the lower they are, the more damage this is going to deal. So you can see that if we can start to spam W and we put a bunch of points into it we're going to be able to start to poke people out a lot okay and the fact that this is area of effect means you can also push minion waves with this ability so if this champion sitting in three caster minions and you want to push the wave but also damage them you can throw that w down and get damage on everybody and it also procs that arcane comet because it's such a wide hitbox you can cast it from so far away it gives morgana a really safe way to get last hits on minion waves push waves and also poke the enemy champion so just your bread and butter ability okay now the second ability you're going to pick up in lane here dark binding this is kind of like your playmaking ability uh, morgana hurls a blast of starfire and roots the first enemy hit for two seconds this doesn't go through minions unfortunately so you're going to have to if you want to hit an enemy champion line it up directly on them but the cool thing about the q is it deals a good chunk of damage it does root for a really long time like two seconds is a long time um but the most amazing thing to me is the hitbox on this ability so like you can aim this and technically miss well that was interesting and sometimes grab some interesting hits so you can see there on the top side of the champion base model even though i'm missing the champion's model it's showing that it's going to hit from here pretty crazy actually so you'll find that when you throw this ability out you'll even surprise yourself sometimes when it's hitting um, and the enemy champion will be equally surprised even from here though it looks like it's gonna hit it may miss may not right so try and experiment in a practice tool like we're doing here when the ability hits when it doesn't but either way the hitbox is so wonky that sometimes when you think you're gonna miss it's gonna hit and you're gonna be able to chunk the opponent out for a bunch of damage okay all right, so the basic combo then at level two, if you were ever to hit your Q, is you're going to throw the W once that champion's been rooted so that you get the full damage from your W out on that champion, okay? Much more efficient if you're looking for a really big chunking trade combo to throw Q and then W as opposed to W and then Q, okay? Because if you're trying to time up and maximize that, that chain of damage from the W over all five seconds, obviously you want that champion stuck in place for when you throw that w down all right now the next ability here that you could pick up in lane could be your e but i actually prefer for beginners and for most solo laning morgana or jungly morgana that you actually put two points into your tormented shadow first just because you're probably not going to see a gank coming you're probably not going to get all in or dove if you're playing morgana fairly consistently and, and conservatively in the early lane phase so you prefer to have a little bit more damage in your w to poke the enemy champion and to also start to push out minion ways or clear those backline caster minions so you could look for a cheater recall um, if you don't know what that means that's fine too it just basically is your damaging ability that you're going to be using the most so it's good to put two points into it early at level four you can put a point into your e uh, Black Shield gives Morgana or an ally champion uh, 191 magic shield in this case with the current ability power that we have. But more importantly, it prevents disabling and immobilizing effects for the whole five seconds that it's on you. So if let's say Blitzcrank was trying to throw a hook at me, it's not going to hook me. Right? Pike tries to throw a hook, it's not going to hook me. Uh, Lux tries to, to bind me, it's not going to bind me. Anything that immobilizing or disables me, it's not going to happen. And I can put that on myself by pressing Alt-E, and then it's going to go on myself and stay for five seconds. Or I could hover my cursor over an ally champion, and I could also put it on the ally champion and give them the black shield as well. Okay, So this is why Morgana is, is also flexed in as a support character and i think is primarily defined as a support character it's because you have that ability to black shield your um partner adc and this ability is such a game-changing ability not only does it give you a little bit of an ap shield but again more importantly it prevents them from being disabled or immobilized which is huge right and the fact that it stays on them for five seconds massive 
So those are your basic abilities in terms of using these as a combo. There's not really a damaging combo that you have as Morgana pre-level 6. Like you could use your Black Shield if you wanted to run in, land a Q, throw your W down, trade like that, and then walk away and not take any damage or mitigate some of the AP damage you might take in that trade in the mid lane. But generally, I would just suggest actually before you get your Lost Chapter, saving all your mana only for Ws. And we'll get into this more when we do the sample lane phase here in a second, but I just don't see the point in throwing out any Qs before you get a Lost Chapter. It sucks up too much mana. It's not going to you're not ever really going to one-shot or kill the enemy champion in the lane 1v1 with your QW damage combo. So really you're going to use your W to poke and push minion waves, save all your mana for that. If you're going to get ganked or someone tries to hard engage onto you, you can press E and walk away um, and also Q them under turret if they try and dive you or Q them if a jungle gank's coming. That's really it. So lane phase pre-level 6 with Morgana is very, very simple. You're just going to spam Ws. Okay. Okay, now let's talk about Level 6, obviously you're going to max out your W, but when we can, we're going to put a point in R. So Soul Shackles is another really character-defining ability for Morgana. She basically, in this big circle around her, when she casts it, changes herself to nearby enemy champions, deals some magic damage and slows them, but after 3 seconds deals more magic damage and then stuns them. Okay, so what that looks like is, you know, you're hanging out here. It'll only become active to use once ch enemy champions are in range. So you can see right now that's not highlighted. It's not active. If I move within range of this unit, it becomes active. So once I do that, I can press R. It's going to put a chain on them. I don't know why the flash went off too there. But it deals some initial damage, slows them. And then after three seconds, if they're still within my R circle range here, then it's going to deal more damage and stun them. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like if they leave range. We don't get that second part. The the second part of the ability just doesn't go through. So you want to make sure you do a really good job after you cast R, staying within range of that enemy champion to get the second part of the damage and the stun off. Okay, so that's the R. Now, when you actually pick up R, you do have the chance to combo and potentially one-shot your enemy champion that you're going to be facing off against in lane or in team fights and small 2v2 skirmishes. The way that's going to work is you want to press R on them, let the damage come out, and then once they're rooted at the second part, you throw the Q to keep them there, and then you land the W on them. Okay? So the logic behind that is if someone's uh, stunned, for 1.5 seconds at the second part of your R, you won't miss your Q, hopefully, right? Because it's going to be a non-moving target. So you stun them, then you throw the Q, stun them some more, and throw that W down so they take all that damage while they're stunned. Okay? So the basic all-in combo with Morgana in a team fight or in a 1v1 scenario is get in range to press R. Just auto while this is going on if you want. If they're stunned, throw the next stun out, and then throw the W out, and then you can walk away or keep following up with autos. Okay, and that's basically it to Morgana, guys. So that's the build, the runes, uh, the, the abilities, and the combo. Let's jump into a sample lane phase now and show you how to wrap all this together uh, in a 1v1 scenario in the mid lane. Nice. So we're in mid lane here. We've got the enemy AI bots about to spawn and come to lane. Let's just quickly chat about, again, our lane strategy here. We've got Flash and Ignite. We didn't talk about this in the prior point in the guide. We're going to run Flash, obviously, with every champion. And Ignite is just such a good tool for Morgana to pick up some solo kills or, you know, get a little bit of extra burn damage as the game goes in some of these 1v1 or skirmish scenarios. So just a really good aggressive rune, especially if you're playing Morgana in the mid lane or the support. Uh, roll. We're going to pick up W first. That's going to be our first ability. We're not doing any crazy invades right now, so we don't need the Q. And we're also looking to play that poke style Morgana mid before level 6 when we really try and become a disrupting control mage a little bit more in some of those close quarters with our R and our Q stuns and roots. So W's picked up. You do not want to play very aggressively in lane, just randomly pushing waves with Morgana, unless you're looking for a back. The reason for that is you don't really have any uh, dashes or jumps or blinks. So if someone does want to engage hard on you, you want to be able to be close enough to your turret to prevent the death. And you also don't want to get ganked. Now, all that said, if you do find an opportunity to poke the enemy champion with your W, you want to throw that out and get that common on them. So anytime your Comet is up and available to poke, I'd say that's a good time to, th to throw your W out. So I'm not going to throw it out right now because my Comet's not up. Once my Comet's up and ready, I'll poke her with W. 
pretty hard to miss your W. It's a very wide area that you can hit with it. So you should be pretty confident just to walk up and at a pretty decent range still hit them with your W. We're going to try and pick up any kind of last hits that we can with our auto attack damage. We don't really have to focus on using our W for that. Again, we want to wait for the W to be ready to synergize with our Arcane Comet to maximize our poke damage. Okay. Later in the game, as you pick up more mana and you have your Black Shield available, you can get a little bit more liberal with throwing out those Ws just randomly to push waves and like every two, three seconds, just keep pushing them out. So that'll be available to us later in this game. Okay. Now, another cool thing to talk about with the W that we didn't mention earlier on in this game is the cooldown gets reduced by 5% every time I'm healing from Soul Siphon, which is my passive. Now, the simple way to think about this is if you throw your W on a champion or a larger epic minion or monster, the cooldown is going to tick a little bit faster. Okay, so that means that we can keep spamming this faster and faster depending on if we hit an enemy champion with it. So when you're under turret like this, again, I wouldn't use my Q to poke or harass. I would just use my W so far still while the Arcane Comet's up. Because if a gank comes or this is a champion that has a dash like Katarina or something, you want to be able to save your Q to protect yourself and stun them so you can walk away. All right. Again, we're waiting for my Comet to come up and then we're going to throw out my W. Comet's up, so we're going to throw it out. And that's all this lane phase is. So it's kind of one dimensional if you're a person who likes to instantly have like five or six different outplay potentials right at the start of the lane phase. Morgana may not be the champion for you, but she is extremely simple to play because of that singular dimension. And you can just keep spamming out your W and pretty much win the lane without having to work too hard. So she's already at about 20% health and really she hasn't touched us once this lane. We've never really been at risk of a gank or anything like that. And because of the W area effect damage, I can really just now after I poke people out, shove the lane pretty easily so sometimes i like to try and use my q to grab those last hits on the cannon minion because the auto attack is a little bit uh here and there with morgana but even there i misjudged my q damage and didn't get the cannon so i'd say that's one of the harder things that you're gonna have to get used to with morgana um laning her in a solo lane and trying to get xp for yourself and and CS score is just getting used to our auto attack damage to last hit minions. Now, because we're running Futures Market, even though I don't have 900 gold, I'm able to pick up this Fiendish Codex. I didn't have enough mana, or sorry, enough gold off that first back to get the uh, Lost Chapter, which is, of course, a nice core item to rush for us and gives us a good power spike. But the Codex will still be good here. We'll have a nice chunk of AP added to our W here that's going to hopefully hurt this Lux even more. So again, same strategy until we're level 6. I'm saving my Q and my E for defensive use, and I'm going to use my W to poker with Arcane Comet when the Comet is up and available. Okay, even here, I could throw out my Q. Now that I know she's going to try and just trade with me, I will throw out the Q and I'll use the Black Shield here, you can see, to win that trade because I'm not going to take too much AP back from her. And she was stationary trying to land that uh, auto after getting the bind on me that I knew. So again here, see, she's stationary. She's going to try and land that auto. Now I can ignite to get some more damage off on her. And you can see defensively is when I choose to use my Q. So I'm in a trading situation. I need to try and get some damage in return or get them to you know, ease off me, then I'll use my Q as a defensive tool. But I usually don't lead with it um, with Morgana. It's just better to use in 1v1 scenarios as a defensive tool. Later in the game, when we get to team fights, I will just start throwing random Qs out at enemy players when I have a frontliner in front of me to soak up some damage in case people try and jump into me. So here we're just trying to maximize our last hits. We're going to use our W, obviously, to push the wave. And now... We're still going to just hold our Q and our E to try and stop ganks or any kind of crazy um, engages. So here you can just W her and then walk away. Right? No biggie. We're going to take some damage off that. We could use E defensively here and stop any magic damage from hitting us. And then we're back to W pokes when the Comet is up. In a second here, in another couple minutes, this is going to switch, obviously. And we're going to be able to start to trade a little bit more aggressively because we're going to have more mana and more damage with Lost Chapter. And just for the purposes of the video, I will start to throw out some cues for you guys to see that the hitbox and damage is still there. It's just safer to use it defensively. Okay, still don't have enough mana quite yet for the Lost Chapter, so we're going to hang out, try and get one of these 
other large waves. You want to try and use that W on as many of the minions as you can when you're shoving. And then if you can land it on that larger cannon minion, it's going to give you the reduced cooldown on your W as well. So here we're going to try and time up a last hit. Manage to get at that time and shove out another lane. I wouldn't say that you're going to be able to get a bunch of plates with Morgana. She doesn't really deal a, a ton of damage with her autos to the tower. But if there's situations where you keep pushing and poking the enemy out of lane and you're able to shove minion waves like we're doing right now with our W, you might find a chance to hit some, some of these plates and accelerate your gold income like that. So we should have enough money now. We'll get one more plate to get Lost Chapter. And then we're going to recall here. And on the exit trade here, we'll just throw a Q, W combo, and then we'll leave and hopefully chunk her out before we come back to lane. Now, if we were running TP, we could have the ability to come back to lane and not miss any of these minions. But again, I'd argue for you guys as you're learning her, especially when we get into our full uh, one-shot combo here, the Ignite is going to help you guys get some more kills and snowball a little bit easier as Morgana. Okay, so we had enough money there to actually even pick up a pair of boots with the Futures Market. So we're going to come back to lane here, and now we're going to try and do our combo, um, our full one-shot combo to this Lux. And that's going to be, especially because she has a bind, using the Black Shield before we, we kind of initiate everything, just to make sure she can't root us and stop us. Then we're going to cast our R when she's in range, stay in range. When she gets stunned and fully damaged by our R, we're going to follow it up with the Q, and then we're going to use... So we're going to just damage her. Okay, she's stunned, then Q and W. Okay, so we didn't even use a black shield there. I don't think we were in close enough range. I don't think she was going to actually uh, dodge us out there. We didn't even have to use our ignite. So you can see the one shot power is there with Morgana once you get to level six. And that's when you can start to look to make some plays. But before that, we've played a very easy laning phase where we're just throwing out W's and poking and being annoying. Not really exposing herself to any chance of getting killed and uh and just pushing now here i would normally stay and take a plate but uh, i'll show you guys what you can do if you want to roam let's say the enemy champion was there and you're not even gonna be able to get a plate you can roam up and try and land your qw combo even if you don't have alt on enemy champions again here i can lead with the w or i can wait and land my q first and then land the w to make sure i get the full damage so if you can, you want to Q and then W. If you can't and you just need to get some poke out right away, you can land the W. And then again here, just to show the ability of the W here to just damage multiple minions and one-shot them, you can start to push waves really, really easily with your Q, or sorry, with your W. So I think we'll get a quick recall off here and get our Leandri's Anguish. That'll be our first Mythic. And then we're going to come back and maybe do one more all-in combo to the Lux just to show you guys the damage that you can do with the full Mythic. And then I think that'll wrap up the video here and hopefully give you guys everything you need to know to pick this champion up and start playing her at a beginner and even probably intermediate level. Um, all this all-in combo and laning, you can do the exact same way in the support role. I would just say that maybe in support you're going to try and spam the Q a little bit more often because if you can snare somebody in the bot lane, you'll have your ADC helping you with the, the damage. So even though you maybe don't have the damage to fully one-shot somebody, you'll be able to follow up um, from the ADC damage. Now, all laning in the mid lane, because they have to stay within your, your range, you don't want them close to their tower. So ideally, you want to make sure you're holding the wave somewhere in the mid. If you don't think you can all in them or they're playing too safe, you can roam with your jungler with your R and invade. It's a really powerful skirmishing tool. So here, for example, if Lux just is refusing to play the lane phase, we can obviously try and do a shove and a roam. And then just you just W the entire wave like that. And then you just walk away and you can walk to either bot side if they're available for an all-in or top side. Here top was the better gank path, but again, just showing you guys that you could shove and then roam. Or if you have this full item here, your damage really starts to get nutty. You can just keep poking with W's like that. You can throw a Q out and then poke with another W here. You can see that damage is just ticking up and you can even kill her without an R. So Morgana does get really oppressive with her Q and her W if you're able to land it. And then of course with the R in an all-in combo. 
waiting for somebody to come back to all in them. I'll just jump up to top lane here. We'll see if we can catch Rise on his way back to lane with our full one-shot combo, which is going to be the R, Q, and then W, and then E when needed. But we'll see if we can just show you guys the power of that one-shot here. So I'm going to get in a position just in this bush here to catch Rise while he's walking back to lane after he respawns here. Put a quick ward over so you can see him. And then when he comes back, we're just going to try and one-shot him before he gets even back to turret range. And then we'll wrap up the video with that. But just again, to show you guys the power of the burn damage and the all-in uh, execution with Morgana here. You're just trying to chain up your CC from your R and your Q to land all that damage. So here, so R, you're going to E just to make sure you can land it. He's stunned, you land the Q, and then you land the W. And then you're just going to keep following up with autos, and you can ignite if you need to. So there goes Rise. You catch him before he comes back to lane. You can do cool little tricks like that with Morgana, either in the top lane if you know you're going to catch somebody, or in the jungle. Let's say you had Vision here. You could do that same trick if you knew that the enemy jungler was going to come and try and grab that red buff. You could try and one-shot them like that. So from behind here, you can always try and throw your Qs out. There's that kind of weird hitbox again that we talked about with Morgana, that you still get that hitbox with the Q. And then you can just follow it up with some autos and get the kill. Make sure you're still using your autos. You can see the autos do help me land those kills um, in a lot of these scenarios. So don't forget about your autos as Morgana. Okay, guys, hopefully that was really informative and you learned a lot. If you did, let me know in the comments and let me know how the games go. I'll catch you in the next one.